there's almost nothing to rival that formal process where you present your credentials to the host government. And there you are saying, you know, the president has sent me to represent him to you. That's, uh, th that leaves a lasting impression. My name is Marsha Bernica, and I am the Director General of the Foreign Service and the Director for Global Talent Management for the United States Department of State. Among the many things that an ambassador is, one of our most important roles is to be the voice and the face of the United States in the country we are assigned to. Our value as diplomats in general, but especially as the ambassador, is that we not only translate the U.S. and what our needs and desires and goals are to our host government, but we also are required to interpret what's going on in the host country back to the United States with the view of whether or not what's going on supports or threatens U.S. interests. We do our homework before we go, so the better you understand the history of the country, um, as well as the current events. So you try to study as much as you can. Um, before I went out on my ambassadorships, I also reached out to every one of my predecessors um, who was alive and, and able to meet with me before I left to get their personal experience. You also want to meet with members of the diaspora as well. These could be people who immigrated weeks ago or a generation ago, um, who still maintain ties to their country. They are, are very invested in the relationship that the United States has with their country of origin. And many play a very important active role in American politics to help advance those interests. Once you arrive in, in country, you want to meet as many people as possible, as early as possible. The more that you interact, not only with government officials and business people, but with everyday citizens, again, meet journalists, meet um, civil society, people who are activists, whether they're activists for human rights or for women's rights or for um, any host of issues. Um, I also always love meeting with students um, to get an idea of what the future of the country is going to look like. About two thirds of the countries in the world today are still developing countries and they depend on foreign assistance from the US and from other countries to help develop their people, help develop their industries, help develop their, their infrastructure. And so they look to, and in many cases, really prize the kinds of assistance that we can provide. The American ambassadors almost always sought out immediately and listened to very carefully um, because we either are playing an outsized role in that country or um, we have the potential to. As a U.S. ambassador, in fact, as a U.S. diplomat, we're trained to be very careful about those things that we endorse. So, for example, I've had people who would say, will you endorse my product, you know, my beauty product, for example. It's like, no, um, we're not meant to advertise. And in fact, it's very much against our ethics rules to do that. I've had members of opposition political parties come to me and say, can you please actively work to promote our candidate so that we can defeat the current president? And I've said to them that one, we don't do that, but two, how do you think that would work? Would the people of your country accept that the American government had chosen their leader? Um, and even if they did, how would that help you as a country advance your own goals of being able to have a truly representative government? 
When we send back information to Washington, but the policymakers in Washington advise the president, who then decides on a policy, if we think that policy is not the right one, um, then the ambassador in particular has the responsibility to call back, talk to officials back here to say, you've got this piece wrong, or you've got this approach wrong. But we can't just say that, we have to be able to explain why. Because if you do this, from where we are sitting, from what we understand, it won't cause the reaction you want to happen. It'll cause something else to happen. If we can make that argument credibly, then we help change the policy. There are times when we cannot change people's minds, in which case our next responsibility is to say, when you implement this policy, this you know, thing we don't want to happen is likely to happen. Here's how we can mitigate the damage. I've lived in most parts of the world and certainly dealt with representatives from around the world. And the more I've seen and learned about people, the more I think we have much more in common as human beings than, than there are issues that divide us. And that the more we focus on making sure that we have an agreement on what we do agree on and what we do have in common, that gives us a good solid basis on which to talk about and resolve those things that we differ about.